from CNN, sketch artist describes capturing tense moment between Michael Cohen and Trump attorney. So here they are once again, grasping at straws, trying to make sure that you care about a completely false and phony, politically motivated trial at its very best. And I don't know why the courtroom sketch artist would throw away years of experience and her entire career to become a partisan CNN hack. But my name's Eric. This channel is called Report and Opine. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'm absolutely begging you. I'm begging you, please, come on, please. <laughs> because the algorithm is a beast, it would help me a lot and it would cost you nothing to engage with the content. But if you wanna help me a little bit more and spend some money, go ahead and buy my book, New York City 2020, Gotham Unglued, on amazon.com, that link will be in the description. In searing cross-examination of Michael Cohen today, Donald Trump's lawyer Todd Blanche grilled Cohen on all the times he'd previously gone under oath, raised his right hand, and then... And of course, here we have Anderson Cooper, lizard person extraordinaire, who was there to push the agenda on you and let you know that uh, or Orange Man Bad, obviously, that's many years old by now, but I could venture that there are no adults, you know, miles surrounding the downtown New York courthouse, and they're going to bring... I mean... It is proof that, I mean, there's no such thing as a fair trial in a completely corrupt case, but they're going to bring in one more person who is willing to testify that basically orange man bad. And this isn't this isn't the worst of it, I don't think, but they're still trying to make sure that you know that. Remember, oh, Donald Trump stepped out on his wife. Don't worry about Slick Willie, Clint, Slick, Slick Willie Clinton. Don't worry about Bo Jiden showering with his daughter. Don't worry about Hunter Biden. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Just know that you can't have a man who's cheated on his wife, that's completely out of the realm of possibility for a corrupt establishment. I mean, the list goes on from Tiffany Henyard, London Breed. It's just through the roof, but this is the worst. And this is probably why they want to get rid of him because they're doing such bad things, but I digress. And lied. This was one of those combative moments captured by the ultra-talented veteran courtroom uh, sketch artist Jane Rosenberg. And we're very glad, uh, glad that she is back with us tonight. Um, I, you've got to be exhausted. I appreciate you coming in to, to talk Thank about you. the day. I mean, to, to many people in the courtroom, this was an exciting day with the, the cross-examination to, toward the end of it. You captured this moment of... An exciting day in a theater trial that means absolutely nothing, right? I mean, the, the weaponization of the, this legal system is just insane. And he's super thankful for her because she's, you know, probably working all day doing her job, but she took time out to collect a little check from CNN and, you know, listen to their agenda and pair it a little bit, a little bit of the talking points. Of, of Todd Blanch raising his hand, that was in his cross-examination of Michael Cohen, and he was repeatedly saying, you've, you know, sworn in a courtroom, you've raised your right hand. When you saw that, had you already started the sketch, or did you suddenly have to shift and start a whole new sketch of Todd Blanche raising his arm. I mean, did I you know this was going to be the moment? I did not know it would be the moment. And I did start another one with him leaning over the, the podium like this, which uh -huh. he does a lot. Mm -hmm. But then he raised his hand, and I had to switch that. So, <laughs> so can you just erase I, an and arm? And he did and... it so many times. He raised his right. hand. To... What? This, this is a wacky old lady. She kind of is, I mean, reminiscent of E. Jean Carroll, like a crazy cat lady with frizzy hair talking about how she had to erase the, the what Th this i mean they do have to fill 24 hours a day with orange mad bad content so i guess this is just part of that you swore to tell the truth then what did it mean and in fact at, at a certain point the judge seemed to sort of be like okay let, you know, we got it let's move it along but do, did you did you have to like erase the arm or do yes. you start a whole new sketch no i erased the arm <laughs> okay well, i mean it doesn't always work but i that's what i did this time because i had so much else already in there I felt oh I think I could just put that arm up it's there now I'll just pull it up you've heard a lot of cross-examinations did you think I mean, did this one register to you in any particular way no no <laughs> no. no it didn't register to me right he he's trying to obviously like siphon some sort of like oh this is the demise of Trump orange man bad out of her and she's like no even, this is you didn't think it was as exciting. Like, I, I, I haven't mean, seen many, so I thought the end was incredibly... No, cross is often exciting. It, mm -hmm. it should be. And, and lawyers get really excited when they're going to cross somebody. I think it, and, that's why they call it the crucible of cross-examination. Well, and Todd Blanche is not really well-practiced in, in... Oh, here comes Caitlin Collins, the epitome 
of the weirdo establishment hack shield because we all remember when she worked at Daily Caller and she was talking about the WEF and BLM, I believe, all sorts of stuff. It wasn't even that long ago. She pretends that never happened, even though the the clips of the old clips of her are fro- floating around on Twitter and a bunch of weirdo lefties under it don't like her because she came from the Daily Caller. And in this data dump, one of the memos was about the refugee crisis. And they made three points. They think that they've been successful at influencing immigration policy across the world. They think that the refugee crisis is an opportunity to continue doing so. And they think the refugee crisis is the new normal. And George Soros is this guy who is a staunch advocate for open borders. He wants people to be able to go wherever they want, whenever they want, for whatever reason. And for him, he sees this immigration policy, this crisis as a vehicle to further his immigration agenda. And I mean, she was lying then or she was lying now. She's probably lying now because she's she was speaking the truth back then. But somebody said, you need to stop that. and We're going to bring you on to CNN. And she went along with it. A cross-examination. I mean, he. I think he would even acknowledge that. And so today was really a big test for him. And so for him to kind of have, you know, this disbelieving tone in his voice as Michael Cohen was answering his questions, raising his hands, raising his voice, kind of this high-pitched voice at, at times to kind of say... No one can believe what you're saying, Michael Cohen. He seemed almost apoplectic at times. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, Yeah. he would say, are you finished now? Please don't give a speech. I understand your characterization, but we just read it. Nothing on that letter is not the truth. And I'll just say one moment that I noticed today was after a break, they were walking back in the room. Normally, Trump strides in by himself. He's at the the front of the room. He comes in alone, and then everyone trails in behind him. So this this is what constitutes as, I guess, news on CNN. Right. This the courtroom sketch artist who is she I guess she doesn't weigh in on the case at all, but she's obviously become a partisan hack. And then Caitlin Collins talking about how Trump walked into the room. Like they, They're just looking for anything to keep this top of mind, even though it's not really working. Right. Like all all of these people should. OK, so anybody involved in the case, I, I would venture to say is compromised now they might have one rational person on on the jury and i think that's all they need but on the other side of town up in the bronx there's a thirty thousand person rally he and todd blanche were walking side by side kind of talking to one another you never really see trump like that with his attorney walking into the room no you're right he's always behind him todd blanche okay and so they walked into the courtroom in a different order what's the what's the point what you said that to say Mm-hmm. I will say that in some of those more shrill Todd Blanche moments, including the two at the end where he uh, confronted Cohen and there was an objection and the objection was sustained, those were moments that the jury paid, I-, I thought, hard to discern attention. They were very attentive. You couldn't read them. They were visibly annoyed with Blanche. I saw eye rolling, oh, really? looking away. It was too much. And it- Oh, Trump's lawyer. Oh, they were they were annoyed with him. So we lobbed all this at him and we don't want to field questions from his lawyer. Uh, OK, it detracted. It shows his lack of experience because it actually detracted from the point he was making. He would have been better to let the um, uh, revelation that he had elicited from Cohen breathe rather than uh, being uh, objected to and uh, so uh, so let. Yeah, yeah, just let the liar talk. Let him try to take down Trump and, and don't stop him at all. Is that what he's saying? And you'll know, okay, well, there is one black lady there, but for the most part, I mean, they're all awfuls. Even the gentleman on the panel. So, okay. I take that back. There's only two women. One of them is black, but then the rest of them are quite clearly awfuls demanding that you capitulate to their demands. Loud and unpleasant. It looked to me like the jury was not liking Todd Blanche very much in those moments. Well, editorializing while you're cross-examining a witness is usually a bad idea. I mean, that's not what you're there to do. You're, you're there. Bad from a, a, a legal standpoint or just from a, from just, a from jury a, impact? From a, a tactical jury impact standpoint. Yeah. You know, the jury's not interested in your editorializing. Yeah. They want to try to get to the facts just like every jury wants to get to the facts. They want to get to the facts? Look, I don't know. This guy used to work for Trump or uh, Trump counsel in the first impeachment case or whatever. But really, they want to get to the facts. If they wanted to get to the facts, this wouldn't even exist. Right? If they're... 
they took the facts seriously, this wouldn't even be a case. Facts, but that moment with the, the you know, the hand raised and whatever, I'm, I'm sure that you dated uh, your work and probably noted the time too, right? <laughs> no. Someday that'll probably appear on Todd Blanche's office wall, I'm sure for a fee. Maybe. But there you go. <laughs> you know, I, I love critiquing lawyers as much as the next person, but you know, every time I've talked to jurors, and here's uh, Tubin, right? That Jeffrey Tubin, who of course was notoriously fired for touching himself on a Zoom call, but he's back and they pretend that didn't happen either. And if you want to use the same standard, then he should be fired and jailed as well. Almost always what you hear from them is, oh, you know, the lawyers were fine, but the evidence was X. <laughs> yep. And they, you know, they don't parse the performance of the attorneys as much as we do. And I think, you know, I, this is one of the great things about the jury system is that I think the evidence actually matters a lot more than the performance of the lawyers. The, the person who does parse the lawyers is definitely Trump. Yep. And I mean, if, if our friend Arthur Adalia was here, he would say, you know, uh, you know, Trump, his other attorney, Susan Necklace, has way more experience in doing a cross than Todd Blanche. But once that moment happened, yeah, he should have picked a woman. I mean, it will never be enough. They're, they're, it will not matter until this man is meets his demise. They are going to continue to find any and everything to complain about. And I was like, oh, okay, that's why Todd Blanche is doing this cross examination. Mm. He, Trump is a very, you know, he likes to archetype people and just sort of put them in their categories. I can imagine what, as the exact same thing that CNN does. I, I would venture to say that that's not even true. Like Trump's not really doing that, right? We all saw the clip of him up in the Bronx saying, "We're all Americans." It doesn't matter whether you're black or brown or white. Or whatever the hell color you are, it doesn't matter. We are all Americans, and we're going to pull together as Americans. And you guys are the one constantly putting people in boxes, right? I mean, black people don't know what a computer is. Black people only vote Democrat, right? You guys literally do that. The projection is real. Imagine this is speculation, but I can only imagine him thinking, wanting to have somebody with the physicality of Todd Blanche, who is actually a very kind of broad shouldered type of person, to be able to do that kind of aggressive, sort of in your face challenging of Michael Cohen. That Susan Necklace is an incredible professional, but she's, that's not how she conducts herself in her, doing her job. And stylistically, it's a choice. Whether it will matter to the jury, I don't know, but it probably mattered to I, Donald I Trump. I think that's yes. high, a high theater moment. And although Jeffrey's correct to point out that it's still ultimately about facts, but high... Th it's absolutely not about facts. We wish it were about facts, but it's not. It's about people who have been radicalized to hate this man by... by no matter what happens, right? Like the facts, we all know the facts don't matter. So you can't pretend that, oh, well, the jury is going to take it, you know, take in the facts and they're going to rule fairly. Right? There is the whole thing is corrupt. The whole thing is biased. So there is no such thing as fairness within that corrupt system. And I think me and the CNN talking heads would agree that the entire system is corrupt but have a completely different opinion on why that's actually happening or who it's targeting. Theater moments, people are human. You know, facts are not everything. People. And there you have it. Facts are not everything. He literally said it. Facts don't matter. Well, uh, when it comes to jury deliberations, in my experience, those are emotional moments in addition to fact gathering uh, moments. And, and theater, uh, trials are theater after all. Theater matters. I theater so. matters. Jane I've Rosenberg. seen lawyers. Theater absolutely matters, and this entire thing is a theater trial. Without theater, and you can go to sleep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. That's not a problem. With okay, yeah, and that's all very funny. They, they laugh it up, they have a joke, but he literally says that facts don't matter, which is true in this case, and then she says, well, theater matters, otherwise you might go to sleep. And they're, I mean, they're highlighting this, and of course, letting you know that no matter what happens, just remember that Donald Trump stepped out on his wife.